Really, I was just drenching my plant in neem oil and hoping magically the mites would go away. And that is so not the case. There is not a single trace of a spider mite anywhere on her leaves. All of the mites are gone. All of the webbing is gone. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jess, welcome back to my channel. So I've been getting a ton of questions both here on my channel as well as over on my Instagram about how I care for bugs, what products do I recommend to treat for them, what is my process, things of that nature. So specifically with spider mites. So I'm going to focus on that today. I'm gonna to share with y'all my full debugging treatment process from start to finish on how I permanently get rid of spider mites. So. It is something that unfortunately we probably all will face. If you are a plant collector, you probably will get spider mites at some point, unfortunately. It's just something that happens. And it is something that's very scary. It can be very stressful, especially if it's a plant that you've had for a long time or if it's a rare plant that's hard to find or if you paid a lot of money and it was an expensive plant. Trust me, I understand. I've been there. I've lost my share of plants to spider mites and I'm happy to say that I finally have figured out a process that actually works. So this is my Snow Diffenbachia in front of me here. This one did have spider mites and she's fully recovered as you can see here. This is a brand new leaf. This is also a new leaf and then she just put this one out last week and oh look you guys she's got another one coming. So this plant is doing amazing. I'm so happy y'all. I'm telling y'all this process works. I've been using it for maybe like maybe like five to six months or so and when I use this process the spider mites are completely gone. I don't have any issues. All the eggs, the webbing, everything is gone. So I'm going to show y'all literally how I get rid of the bugs step by step from start to finish and yeah let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so here is my example for today. This is my super bomb. I have let this one purposely go. Um, I'm not sure if y'all remember when I got this. I got this, I think, maybe two months ago now. I think I got this back in December. And I got this plant for free. It was covered in spider mites in the store, and the lady was going to trash them all, so she let me have it for free. And I purposely have not treated it yet so that I could let it go, get a bad infestation so that I could do this video for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and get in a little bit closer so you all can see what I'm talking about. This is a bad case of spider mites. So if you see this, if you see, y'all see all these white specks and webs, that is spider mites. So they are mites, but they are not microscopic. So you don't actually need a microscope to see spider mites. They are arachnids, so they're very similar, or I should say related to spiders. So they do form webs as well, just like spiders. But if y'all see all of this webbing and the little specks there, that is the spider mites. So they like to live in the nooks and crannies of leaves. So you'll normally find them down Normally they like to party right down here in the base of the leaf and also on the undersides of leaves. So you normally notice more webbing on the back side of a leaf. And then also, let's see if I can, here we go. So if y'all see the browning here, if you notice browning on your edges and maybe sometimes I know my um, Bird of Paradise when it had spider mites, I noticed yellow, like random yellow patches on the leaf. So that is a sure tell sign, along with the webbing, that you have a case of spider mites. So those are some of the signs that you can look out for to determine whether or not you have spider mites. Also, you can take a sheet of paper and hold a sheet of paper, just a white sheet of paper, up underneath the leaf and shake it. And if you shake it and you notice black speckles falling down on the paper, that also is a sure tell sign of spider mites. If you can see here, I've got tons sitting here on my table. So yeah, that is what spider mite damage looks like. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a test and just, just for an example for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this one down really, really well, give it a nice wash. 
a thorough soaking and I'm going to come back and show you guys how I actually get rid of the spider mites. Okay, you guys, so I just wanted to give you another example. This is my Chiflera Amate. And this plant was infested with spider mites. So I want to say maybe like four months ago now. Um, so I did do the same treatment that I'm about to show you guys. But I just wanted to show you all what mite damage looks like. So most of the damage was down here on the bottom leaves. And if you can see here, here's a good example. Right in here. Do you all see how that is like discolored? and lighter than the rest of the leaf. Same thing up here on this one. I know my lighting sucks, you guys, I'm sorry, but this is what mite damage looks like during and after the fact. So mites will suck the life out of your leaves. So if you notice your leaves looking kind of pale and starting to yellow just in random spots, look on the undersides of your leaf and check to see if you have any webbing. So as you can see, all of the mites are gone from this plant. So this one has successfully bounced back. I'm very, very pleased because I love this tree. I got this tree for an amazing price at Home Depot last summer. And as you can see, you guys, it has pushed out a new leaf here. And I also have a little baby up here coming. So yeah, so happy that I was able to save this one from spider mites. <laughs> So another part of my debugging treatment is cleaning my soil. So this is my favorite soil. It is the Black Gold Natural Inorganic by SunGrow. And this particular bag actually came with a bunch of gnats in it. So I'm going to show you how I prevent that. I'm just boiling a pot of water here. And what I'm going to do is pour this boiling water into the soil, let it drain, and that is going to kill and burn any eggs or bugs that are harvesting in that soil. So as you can see here, I've already poured in the hot water and you can see the steam just coming out of the pot of the soil. So that's so y'all, we know that boiling temperatures kill a number of things. This is not only killing the fluoride that may be in the water, but it's also hitting any eggs, any bugs, anything that could be already harvesting in the soil. So you just want to make sure that you let this drain thoroughly. And you also want to let it cool down. So here I am just stirring it up with my scissors. Y'all be very careful because this will burn your hands. This is super hot. But I'm just stirring it up to allow some airflow. And then here I am pouring it into my five gallon container that I keep my soil in. And I just let this cool down overnight. I always prep this the night before. Okay guys, so I have given this plant a full spray down wash. I just use my little faucet nozzle here and put it on the spray. And as you can see, the spider mites are still here. So I just wanted to do that to show you guys that you cannot just blast your plants with water and expect your spider mite problem to go away. You have to actually get rid of the mites. So that is what we're going to do today. I just wanted to do that quick little experiment to show y'all that you can't just blast them with water. Water is not going to kill the mites. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go gather my supplies and I'll be right back. Okay, so first and foremost, you're going to need a spray bottle. This is my disinfectant concoction that I make every time that I am getting ready to disinfect and debug any type of plant. So spray bottle. You're also going to need some rubbing alcohol. This is just a dollar bottle I got from Walmart. And then also some dish detergent. You can use any dish soap, Dawn detergent, whatever you use. I'm using palm olive today. Um, this soap really just serves as a surfactant, which is basically a fancy word for a sticking agent. This helps the spray concoction stick to the leaves of the plant. So that's what the purpose of this. This obviously is the disinfectant. And then lastly, I use a brush. You can use any type of brush you want. You can even use a cloth if you want to. I prefer to use a brush just because this really gets down into the nooks and crannies. This is just a cheap brush that I got in a, I think it came in a two pack actually. Let's see. Yep, I've got the pack right here. So this is 
the pack that it comes in. It comes in a pack of two from the Dollar Tree. If y'all are interested and want to go get the same brush, it's just a dollar for a pack of two. Um, but yeah, this brush is, it's not super soft, but at the same time, it's not like harsh. So you want something that is going to be rough enough to break up the webs of the spider mites. So that's pretty much all you're going to need. I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera and get started on the first step. Okay, so as I stated, I've already got some already mixed up in here, but I'm going to make a full bottle just because I do have some other plants that I have purchased and will be disinfecting. So first step, I take my dish soap and I just, I don't do any specific measurements. I just kind of eyeball it. That should be enough. Then I add my alcohol. And I've only got, if y'all can see, I don't know if you can see that, but I've only got like maybe two here left in there. So I'm just going to pour the whole thing in here. Just like that. And then the rest I just fill up with water. Okay, once I've got that, um, oh, one more thing. Now this is not required, but I'm not sure if you all have seen my cleaning video, how to clean plant leaves. I'll link that up in the card somewhere. But I also will add this sometimes. This is just lemon, eucalyptus, pure essential oil. And I'll just add a few drops of that in as well, just because this is a natural insect repellent. So I'll throw that in there sometimes if I have it on hand and then just mix it up. Okay, so now that I have my spray mixture all mixed up, next up I'm going to just spray the entire plant down, just drench the leaves of the plant. And y'all, my spray bottle is kind of broke, but we're gonna make it work. Okay, so I've got the whole plant pretty much covered and just making sure that it is dripping. You want the whole plant to be dripping wet. And I'll just let that sit and marinate for maybe like 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll come back and show y'all what the next step is. Okay, so now that it's been sitting for about, I let it sit for about maybe eight to 10 minutes, y'all, just for the sake of time of this video, I'm trying to get this done. Um, but yeah, I just let it sit and basically what the purpose of that first step of letting it soak is just to make sure that all of the alcohol is getting into the nooks and crevices of the leaves and it's actually soaking and killing the existing mites, so. Now that that's been soaking, we're gonna go ahead and take our brush, our trusty little paint brush, and we're gonna do the same thing, another drenching. And y'all, again, my nozzle, I don't know what's wrong with this nozzle, but I even switched to a different nozzle, if y'all notice, this one is orange. And it's still messing up, but anyways. So I will take my brush and soak my brush once the nozzle cooperates. <laughs> I'll just take my brush and then what you want to do is take a leaf and y'all, you can use gloves if you want. I don't just because I just wash my hands afterwards. And you just wanna make sure that you are breaking up all of that debris and webbing that's on the leaf. So you just wanna start at the base of the leaf. Make sure I'm not blocking y'all. Take your other hand and support the bottom of the leaf. Yes, there are webs and mites on the other side. That's why I said you can use gloves, but y'all, spider mites are not gonna hurt you. Um, but yeah, just go in very lightly, not too light, but you wanna use some force. And again, support the leaf on the bottom and just make sure you go fully all over the leaf and you wanna go in the direction of the leaf pattern. You see all the suds and the al I can smell the alcohol. It's just getting in all the nooks and crannies to thoroughly clean the leaf. 
you want to make sure you're getting the entire portion of leash. And then I'll just rinse my brush every now and then, and then respray to coat it up again. And that's the purpose of the dish soap is to help this mixture stick to the leaf. The dish soap acts as, like I said, a surfactant. And y'all don't worry about using alcohol or dish soap on your plants. They don't mind it at all. It won't harm your plants at all. I use this, well not the alcohol, but I use dish soap in my yard all the time. It helps loosen up the soil, aerate the soil a little bit, and also helps fertilizer, any sprays or any weed, any weed spray that I might be spraying to stick to the blades of the grass. But that's a whole nother topic. Let me stick to spider mite care. So yeah, that leaf is covered and you're just gonna go around and do the same thing to every single leaf. And y'all, you might wanna wear some clothes that you just don't care about. Spider mites are hitchhikers. So that is, well, I'm not sure exactly how you get spider mites, but that is one way that you can get them in your home or introduced into your home, is they will hitchhike on your clothes. If you're outside, they can blow in the wind. That's how light they are. If you have the air conditioning blowing, they travel on air, basically, and fly on their webs. So just make sure you're getting the entire leaf cleaned, get all down. That's why I use a brush instead of a cloth, because the brush will get down into the veins and nooks of the leaf very easily. And then we're going to do the undersides. And y'all, I'm sorry if my hand, this angle is not the best angle, but this is the only setup that I could do for now to film this for you. I don't have anybody else here to help me at the moment. Just making sure I'm getting the entire backside. All right, so that's the second leaf done. And I will also sometimes hit the stems at the base as well, because sometimes they'll form some webs down there as well. So you can hit that as well. They reproduce very fast and they spread to your other plants very fast. So if you do find an infestation, don't panic. Just separate that one plant away from the others and then just do this treatment process. And you probably will have to repeat this maybe like three or four times. I normally do this once a week until I notice the mites are completely gone. And yeah, your mites should be gone. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these last three leaves here. Okay, so now that I've done the application, I'm gonna let this sit for about five to 10 minutes just to let that alcohol really get in there and soak and kill those mites and the eggs that may have been left on the leaves. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of the mites or killed the mites, hopefully, that are existing, you also want to change out the soil. Mites, they don't necessarily live in soil, but during the cooler months, they will hang out in the top layers of the soil. In the summertime, they feed on the leaves. So you definitely want to get rid of the old soil and get your plant into some new soil. And what I like to do is just get rid of all the soil or as much soil as I can down to bare roots and then repot it into new fresh soil. So I'm just gonna do clean off the roots here and the roots look really healthy still just my leaves are a bit damaged so the soil came off pretty easy actually and as you can see I've still got the suds on the leaves so we're going to do one 
thorough wash down all at one time to get rid of the soil and wash off the solution mixture. Okay, I think that's good. So let's go over to the sink. Next, you just want to rinse off all of the alcohol and soap suds thoroughly. I also will take my spray bottle concoction, hit the roots a couple times, and then wash those off as well. Okay, so I have washed the pot, it's freshly clean and disinfected with the same spray that I used to disinfect the actual plant. And I'm going to, I've already lined the pot with my little mesh that I always use. Let me put this inside of here so I can try to make as little mess as possible. I'm just going to fill this up with soil that we freshly have boiled and disinfected so we don't have additional issues there. And we're just going to set the plant right down in here without crushing the roots. Hey guys, so I just wanted to hop on camera real quick while I'm waiting for the plant to finish air drying to show y'all what it looks like. Just wanted to share some of my experience personally with dealing with spider mites and some additional options or tips that you can use to try and prevent and treat spider mites. So of course you can go the natural route that I just showed you. That is the way that I prefer to go. It's very inexpensive. All you need is water, a spray bottle, alcohol, and just soap. Like most people have that in their homes. So you can use that. It's very, very effective as you'll see in a few minutes. And let's see, some other options I have tried using. I've tried using neem oil. Y'all, neem oil did absolutely nothing for me. Um, it literally just, I feel like it just made my house stink. My plants stink. That stuff smells horrible. But some people have found that it's very effective. So I think I personally was just using it wrong. Literally, I was just drenching my plant in neem oil and hoping magically the mites would go away. And that is so not the case. You have to get in there and you have to break up the web in order to get rid of those mites. So you can definitely try neem oil. That is another somewhat natural way to try to get rid of them. Um, there are sprays you can use. This is the one that I prefer to use. It is by Bonide. It is Captain Jack's Dead Bug. And as you can see down here, it says that it is for organic gardening. I hope that is in focus for you guys. But yeah, this spray is very effective. It does stink. So you guys, if you use this spray, make sure you do it outside or somewhere that is very well ventilated because this stuff smells very strong, but it does go away in like a day or two. So it's not like something that lingers like neem oil. Every time you walk by, you get the funk in your face. So you can use this. I'm just going to read what it covers. It does kill bagworms, borers, beetles, caterpillars, coddling moth, gypsy moth, loopers, leaf miners, spider mites, tent caterpillars, thrips, and more. So this is a great spray to use, y'all, if you can hear it. There's nothing left in here. This is literally an empty bottle. I just kept it to show y'all for the video. I use this both on my indoor and my outdoor plants. So this is a great option. Another one is this one here. This one is Garden Safe by Garden Safe. <laughs> it is Fungicide 3. This is also for organic gardening. So it's safe to use on anything. And this one just says that it does cover uh, well, it treats for miticide, insecticide, and fungicide. It's a three-in-one. You want to make sure that you get something that says it is for mites. Spider mites are not insects. They're arachnids. So if you get something that just says it kills insects, it's not going to work. You have to get a spray that said it's specifically for mites. That's what you want to look for when you're shopping for a spray. So this is another one that I use both indoor and outdoors. If I have a a plant that has a fungus problem, I will use this. And yeah, this is another great option. So those are two sprays that I prefer to personally use. You're more than welcome to try neem oil. You might have some success with it if you combine it with the technique that I just showed you. As long as you're breaking up that web, anything that you use that says that it's for killing mites or insects should work. So 
just wanted to throw those two little tips in there for you. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the plant and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, you guys, here she is all freshly treated, washed and repotted. She's got some fresh soil and a new decorative pot. I picked this up from Walmart. I think it was like maybe only like seven bucks, but I think she looks gorgeous in it, y'all. Look, I just love the texture of the leaves of this plant. Like it is so gorgeous. And even though she has mite damage, she still looks just so lush and green. I love it against the contrast of this, the simple lines on this pot. It looks so good together. But yeah, okay, so let me give y'all a closer look here. Let's see what our work is looking like. As you can see here, there is not a single trace of a spider mite anywhere on her leaves. All of the mites are gone. All of the webbing is gone. So, of course, she still has a little bit of water marks because she still is air drying a little bit, but all of her spider mites are completely gone. So that's why I like using the brush technique is it really gets into all the nooks and crannies of the leaves. It doesn't matter what type of plant that you're treating, the brush will get into all the nooks and crannies of the leaves to really get in there and break up the webs. Like if you get in there and you bust up their homes, they have no option but to evacuate. So that's mainly that's the main point that I wanted to get across to you guys is you have to break up that webbing. You cannot just spray the plant and expect the spider mites to go away. You have to disturb their homes. So yeah, I hope that seeing this process was helpful for you guys. If you see spider mites on your plants or if you see a plant that you wanna buy and it has spider mites, don't be intimidated by it. Like this process was very, very easy to go through. Like literally everybody has water I'm pretty sure everybody has a bottle of alcohol in their home somewhere and everybody uses dish soap to wash their dishes. So that's really all you need. Just put it in a spray bottle, mix it up, and then just get a, a brush. Just get, you can get a paintbrush, an old makeup brush. You can use a microfiber cloth, a terry cloth, a towel, wash cloth, whatever you want to use. Just make sure you get something that will actually get in there and break up that web. So... I hope seeing this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or concerns or if you just need some advice or have any additional tips that you'd like to share, please leave all of that down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and interact with you guys. That's what makes this fun for me. You know that. And we also can learn from each other within the community. So I enjoyed making this video for you guys. If you liked it and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.